Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. The 14-inch and 16-inch M1 MacBook Pros came out last year and they were pretty solid pro upgrades uh, for the MacBook line. In this video, I wanna go over the basics, the fundamentals of how to use these machines, as well as some tips and tricks for getting the most out of them, including several tips and tricks that I've never shared on this channel before. So let's go ahead and get started with all the best software, hardware, and accessory tips for this device. Let's go ahead and get started with a hardware tour. On the right hand side, for the first time in years, we have MagSafe. So this port right here is the charging port. Uh, this is only for charging, not for any data transfer. Next are two USB-C type for Thunderbolt 4 cables. You can use these for charging your computer. So if you do wanna charge using just USB-C, you can certainly do that, as well as your three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the side. Then on the other side, we have one more USB-C Thunderbolt 4. So you do have them on both sides at least, so you can use this for all your high-powered accessories and you should get some really good input and output with this. Then you have your full-size HDMI 2.0 and then you have your SDXC card slot for your pretty much standard size camera SD cards. On the back, of course, you do have your Torx, I believe, T6 screws. So if you ever need to get into the machine, you're going to use these screws here. It's a pretty cheap screwdriver that you can get um, on Amazon or wherever, uh, but there's not a whole lot you can do on the inside. So when we open up the machine, you can see just how quickly that did open. This is a very responsive machine, of course, starting with 16 gigs of RAM and the M1 Pro processor. Up front, we do have our camera, which is now a 1080p camera. And of course, you can use the camera in a lot of different apps from FaceTime to the photo booth. If you just wanna capture a quick photo or video, you can do that right here. Uh, and you can also add effects. So if you wanna make it something ridiculous. And of course, on the sides of the machine, I'll go ahead and exit out of this. You have really high quality speakers, as well as a three mic system for what Apple calls their studio quality microphones. So if you're doing something like a voice memo, you can get some really good sounding or at least really decent sounding audio right from the microphones on your machine. On the front in the upper right hand corner, you do have your power button. So press it once to lock your screen. And it's also your touch ID. So you can unlock it. You can also pay for things with Apple Pay. And if you wanna shut down your computer manually, you can hold this down for several seconds until it shuts off. However, you should try to avoid that at all costs if possible, because that is a very abrupt way to shut down your machine. Otherwise, go to the corner, click the Apple logo, and click shut down if you wanna shut down your machine. Now, in terms of charging this machine, uh, of course, your charger in the box, if you have a 14 inch machine, is going to be the 67 watt battery pack. If you get the M1 Max processor, you're going to get the 96 watt power brick. And then if you get the uh, 16 inch computer, you're going to get the 140 watt charger. And that's going to give you the maximum charging speed using the MagSafe magnetic port on the side of your computer. But of course, you can use any other USB type C cable that you have for charging. And you can really even use any charging brick that you have too, uh, something like a Sateki one or Rav Power or Anchor, right? You can get these really small 30 watt charging cubes and you can charge this overnight. Now, if you're doing something intensive, like you're editing a video and you try to charge with a little cube like this, uh, you're probably going to be still losing battery power. However, if you do this overnight, which I do all the time, uh, it's no problem at all just to leave this charging in overnight with a really small compact battery. So because the battery life is so good on here, this is definitely something you can do. Just charge it overnight, you know, at the hotel or in your room or whatever, and then use this during the day. And you probably will be fine, actually. You don't need to lug around the big charger with you, but if you're doing more high powered things for a long period of time, you will want those chargers. So that is the battery on this machine. And you can charge using any of the four ports, technically, the USB-C on either side, or the MagSafe. So that gives you some nice options in terms of charging. Now, one of the big design overhauls of the past few years has been the redesigned status bar up top. Now, Control Center is this little icon right here that if you click on it, it gives you all of your shortcuts and your quick actions, such as Wi-Fi and Do Not Disturb and stuff like that. It's very similar to how it is on the iPhone when you swipe down and you get all those controls there. It's, a, it's the same kind of idea. So if you click on this, you can get things such as your now playing and your sound and yada, yada, yada. Now, if you wanna drag any of these and put them in your status bar, it's really easy. You just pick it up and drag it into your status bar. So for instance, if I want a keyboard brightness to be in my menu bar, I just drag this up into here and there it is right there. 
uh, the keyboard brightness. If I want to take it off, I kind of just wiggle it down here and it will come down from there. So my status bar, I really like to have do not disturb right there just so I can see it. I can turn on a focus mode if I want. There's also the very handy do not disturb button right on your keyboard. It makes it super easy to get in and out of that setting. Now the now playing is also one of my favorite ones. So it gives you whatever's playing in your music, but it also will show you anything that might be playing in Safari or anywhere else across your device. So if you have something that's just making sounds randomly, there's a good chance you can click on this media button and quickly access it and pause it. So you can control kind of all the media across your device really quickly. So I really like the now playing button in the menu bar. Now another really great feature of the most recent Mac builds is that you can actually run some of your favorite iPhone and iPad applications right on your Mac. So for me, this means the Lumix app, which I use with my camera. So I can actually uh, use the iPad app on my Mac. So I can control my camera from my Mac using this app. And I really, really like this. Um, and this basically just emulates an iPad app. And there's other apps that you can use too, such as Overcast for podcasts and more. So not all your favorite apps will support this, but the ones that do, you can search the App Store and see if they have uh, your iPhone or iPad favorite apps available for the Mac. So that's really great. When you're using this computer, you may also want to customize your Touch ID settings. So if we go into System Preferences, and we go to Touch ID, I always turn off password autofill, this very bottom setting. This way, whenever it is autofilling a password in Safari or anywhere, it doesn't require me to use my fingerprint every time. It'll just automatically do it for me. And you can also add more fingerprints. And also, if you have an Apple Watch, you can go into your security and privacy and or just search Apple Watch. And you can set up your Apple Watch to be able to unlock your device automatically when you are near, which is a great feature. If you have an Apple Watch, I currently do not use an Apple Watch. Now two essential shortcuts with this computer, I think are command tab for getting to your recent applications and really quickly switching back and forth between apps. So that's again, command tab. And then command space will pull up your spotlight search, which allows you to very quickly search across your entire device. So you can do things such as calculations four times two, or you can Google things, um, sports so to see if the Bengals beat the Chiefs you can look up contacts and just so much more you can look up files anything you want from spotlight search you can even do apps so system preferences will take me to system preferences now screenshots are a really important part of the Mac experience and there's three main ways of getting to it so you can do command plus shift plus three and this will screenshot your entire screen so here I have a screenshot that I just took. I will delete that. Now you can also do Command plus Shift plus four, and it'll give you this little pointer and you can drag and just screenshot a part of your screen that you want. So this just screenshotted a smaller part of my screen. Or you can do Command, Shift, and five, and this gives you a few different options, including screen recording. So if you wanna make a video recording of your screen, you can do that and you can choose where it saves to, whether it be desktop, messages, QuickTime player. You can do a timer, a microphone, and you can show your mouse clicks or not. And then you have a few different options about what you want to record. And then you can click record. And once you're done, you can either click up here where it says stop and it'll stop the recording, or you can do command shift five again and you get the option to stop the recording. Now say you have Command Shift 4 and you wanna capture an entire segment. If you hold down the space button, it'll show you entire segments that you can capture. So if you just wanted to get the status bar, you can just go to the status bar and you just captured only the status bar. Or I can just capture the preview window. I could just capture the background of this. Uh, if I had my dock open, let's pull up the dock. And I hold down space, I can just capture the dock, right? So it gives you lots of options there to capture. Now also, when you are dragging for your screenshot, and this works for any of these modes, if you hold down the control key down here in the corner, when you let go, it'll automatically copy it to your clipboard and then you can take it somewhere else like Photoshop and paste it. So that automatically copies it to your clipboard. Now one neat trick when you are web browsing, if you do Command L, so Command L, it'll automatically highlight and select your website. And then you can quickly do Command C and you know, 
paste it somewhere else or send it to somebody, but that's very quickly, Command L, Command C, and boom, you've copied it. Now also in Safari, if you double click the right click button on your trackpad, you can actually pull up picture in picture. So I'll select enter picture in picture, and now it has picture in picture over here. Now if you don't see that picture in picture option, you can also right click on the volume icon on your tab and then do enter picture in picture. So that's another option there. Now another feature I really like is holding down option and then clicking several of the shortcuts on the menu bar. So if you option brightness, it'll bring up your display settings. So there we have displays or option mission control or option sound with the volume keys, it'll bring up the sound option. So you can do volume, mission control and sound to very quickly bring up those options. I know a lot of people need to quickly get into the sound settings when they're plugging in a projector or something like that. You can do option sound and it will pull that right up very quickly, very easily. Now also if you have a window open, so we'll open Safari again, and you want to maximize it, right, you can double click the menu bar and it will full size it. Another way of doing this though, if you actually hold down the option key, it will drag it from all sides. So you see it expanding in all directions. So instead of just one direction like normal, if you do option, it'll expand on all sides. So it very quickly allows you to maximize a window. So those are some of my favorite tips and tricks and just general basics of how to use this machine. Let me know if you have any questions, any concerns, and I'll see you in the next video.